Hello GovCon winners and welcome back to the channel. So what are those five areas that the federal government spends the majority of their money? What are those? And often I wonder why is the question asked? Is it that your intent is to establish a business in one of the five areas? Is it you're just interested? Are you looking to pivot? So we're gonna talk all around that because the numbers that are out there are a little misleading. And so I really want to share with everyone here. So the federal government classifies what they purchase into these big bucket categories. And they often use these NAICS codes to then kind of drill it down. So you kind of think of these big bucket areas as like parents, right? And then the NAICS are kind of like the kids. It's the best way to put it. And so different work, different opportunity, be it a service, be it a product, be it a combination of both, be it none of the above are classified in these bigger bucket categories, as well as they receive some type of corresponding NAICS code. So when it comes to what are those five areas where the federal government spends their money, the fifth one is all around transportation and logistics. I'm gonna be reading some notes from my phone because I really want to dig deep because I, there's some things that you really need to take from what I'm going to share with y'all today. When it comes to transportation and logistics, I don't know about y'all, but what comes to mind are like big rigs, trucks, moving furniture, um, relocating military families. Those are some of the opportunities that definitely come to mind. But here are some more. Transportation of things, fuels, packaging, delivering, and motor vehicles. So let's dig deep into that. When you first heard that category, you might have also went where I went, like a big rig. I think of there are many out there, um, different trucking entrepreneurs where they may own a fleet of trucks and they transport for Amazon and the federal government and they've built a, like a multi-million dollar business all around that. Definitely is what I thought. But then when you go back to this fuel, okay? That's an opportunity to sell fuel to the government. Motor vehicles. So my mentor had a contract at um, Fort Benning for the motor pool. And if you are, maybe you're familiar, maybe you're not, a motor pool is in essence, different automobiles of some sort. They could be military grade, they could be commercial, they could be like, like a personal car kind of thing. And the people who are involved in the motor pool, they are there overseeing the vehicles, maybe maintaining them, maybe they're the drivers, maybe they're checking them in and out. And so my mentor had a contract there where her full-time equivalents were responsible for a fleet of um, military grade and non-military grade vehicles. So that's an opportunity. I go here because on the surface, it's under logistics and transportation. They talked about motor vehicles. I'm talking about managing motor pool, right? So there's still one in the same. And that's what's really important to take away from this list, that in the federal government, it's not siloed. It's not like a robot. Things blend, right? Because they may have a requirement. Hey, we need 10 pickup trucks. Okay, that's motor vehicles. But they may also need 10 pickup trucks and five people to help with the maintenance, right? That could technically be cataloged under that parent category of transportation and logistics. So as I go through these, because we have four more, what I really want you to hone in on this is a Kizzy strategy. It's the work, not the title, not even the NAICS code. As you're out there looking for opportunities or you're going to events, it's about being able to really articulate what you're able to do, how you've helped people in the past, and the outcome that's come from your amazingness. That's what's vital. 
So then they can plug and play and figure out how to make it all come together, okay? Number four, medical. Anything and everything under medical. And again, I'm gonna read this to y'all. So you really can take in drugs and pharmaceutical products, Pfizer, right? Healthcare services, medical equipment, accessories and supplies. So during COVID, that was a big area. Companies selling um, masks and other type of protective items. But the government buys way more than that, right? Uh, for example, there could be some type of medical device that's really a laptop, but it's labeled a medical device because it's being used at a medical location. In addition to the VA, the various military installations have medical, dental, all different types of healthcare needs there. So when it comes to this medical bracket, it could be staffing of medical professionals. For instance, my flagship company just bid on um, four kind of medical positions. They were behavioral health, um, like a medical records person and a nurse level three. That's considered medical, as well as lab opportunities. CDC, they have all the time a variety of needs around different labs and processing of labs. So big companies like LabCorp, ProQuest, those are type of opportunities they could bid on. Or if you watching, you have a lab, it could maybe be something you could bid on too. The thing is, when you, you hear that, you know, mama, papa, medical, expand your mind, right? That's what you want to do, right? Is expand your mind. It's any and everything touching the medical space, be it products, be it staffing, be it some type of audit services or certification services or training of medical professionals, that all falls under medical. And when we talk about dollars, I'm gonna look down just because I wanna make sure I give you the most accurate number. We're talking $43.5 billion for medical and transportation a uh, little over 28 billion. So lots of opportunities. So the next one, one of my favorites at 56 billion is IT. And this is one of these spaces where I've always been an early adapter of a technology and love technology. And I remember being a young girl loving my computer class. So I just, I adore this space. And this is my opinion, the biggest opportunity for each and every one of you out there. This is the place where, um, you know, a gentleman by the name of Isaac just was awarded like $50 billion from the federal government. And he's in IT. I've come across it again and again and again and again. Whether it's an 8A firm, it's a small business, it's a large business. IT is something that we all need. So of course the federal government is going to have an even larger need for it and a more urgent need because it's federal government. You wanna make sure we're secure, right? So when it comes to IT, they list, for instance, IT software, um, and when I say they, I'm talking about um, my source for my information is acquisition.gov in addition to my experience in the space. Um, IT hardware, consulting, security, outsourcing, and telecommunications. So as you can tell, it's super vague. My flagship company has a contract with uh, Navy Dental for four IT specialists. That's considered IT. Their full-time equivalents on-site performing IT services. One of my subcontractors had, uh, maybe he still does work with Department of Ed where his team would go on site periodically to service some of their different IT needs. IT also encompasses help desk. Hi, how can I help you with your problem today? You know, <laughs> it encompasses so much and it's this area where we like freak out. It's like, oh my gosh, I need somebody to help me. My phone isn't working. My computer isn't working. And so therefore, you know what we're willing to do? Y'all know it because you're my amazing GovCon winners. We're willing to pay more money. So not only as individual consumers going to, you know, Geek Squad or something, but the federal government 
they are more than willing to pay top dollar for certain IT needs, as well as they recognize, especially with today's economy, that they have to pay competitive wages because if they don't, they're gonna have a lot of IT problems. Nobody wants IT problems. That's up there with having like spouse problems and kid problems and baby problems. Mm -mm, nobody wants that. They don't want that either, y'all. They don't want that. So it's an area I would jump into. Next, this is where I started out. Professional services, $70 billion over that. And they define it business admin, financial, legal, management and advisory, market and public relations, research and development. That's where I started. Social services, technical and engineering services. What's so great about the professional services you can charge a lot because many of the people, whether they're on site at a government agency or off site at the contractor's location, often people in this space have bachelor's, master's, PhD, or they may need um, a certain type of rank to provide what they're looking for. So this is a great place to increase your revenue because you're staffing high level people. It's also really cool. This is a space where an agency may pay millions of dollars for a research project or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, we worked on a project for Department of Transportation where we redid, my flagship company redid um, an entire handbook and I made like a 80%, 90% profit off of that. And that was because they wanted people with advanced degrees and access to certain databases. So this is a, a great area, especially if you're in one of these fields, if you're already in engineering or you kind of had an engineering background or finance background or, or backgrounds like that, is you can kind of get into it. One thing to keep in mind though, this is definitely a space where it's gonna be either on-site or maybe off-site. But be prepared for either or, or maybe a blended approach. Next one, facilities and construction. Facilities and construction. I'm saying this again because it's over $81 billion that the government spends in this space. Wowzers. This is an area that I really had no type of connection to because I started out in research in analyzing data. I started out in professional services and I just never got into construction. But as I've met more and more people through GovCon winners and I coach more and more people, I've learned so much more about construction. And what I find and have found so fascinating is, hey, you know, and you can laugh at me or, or what may have you, but I always thought, oh, construction is like physically building something, you know, or remodeling. I always thought it was at this huge scale. Now I know it's paving of roads or um, it's facility management. It's like pest control or cleaning of things. You know, you may even throw janitorial under there. And now that my kind of mindset around it has expanded, I really understand why this is such a big area. Because similar to IT and professional services, when it comes to um, construction, it's this environment where you know you need talented people to do it. I'm speaking as if I'm the government. They know that. So back to the government's mindset, right? Kizzy strategy, you always gotta understand their mindset. So they know that they need talented people. They also want it done fairly quickly, especially if it's painting or a paved road because it may be interfering with their ability to be on site, right? And at the same time, they may know, oh, I, yeah, it doesn't really take too much to paint or to put down the carpet. They don't know exactly how to do it or make sure it's done right because they know that they probably just look on YouTube to do it. So then they realize, oh my gosh, we need to be able to pay a very competitive wage because we need talent, we need the materials, we understand it may be difficult to get the materials and then you've got to factor in 
the Buy America requirement, I believe with FAA, the percentage of your materials must be 65% American, where with other agencies, it may be 55, 45. You know, you got to look at your contract or the statement of work to, to know that particular percentage. But the point is, the government realizes on the surface, some of these efforts may seem less complicated, but in reality, they need to pay. Hence, why it's number one. So, you know, the, the takeaways from this top five, the opportunities are abundant. And just because you have those big um, titles, those main areas there, the mama and papa, you have all the little babies down here and they have different names, they have different names, they have different codes. They're gonna look a little different, seem a little different. It's all gonna be a little different, but what's important is realizing this is a lot of money a lot of money. There's enough money for every single one of you out there watching and some in this federal government space. So what's key is you're getting out there and you introducing yourself and you're bidding and you also are keeping in mind, you don't have to be siloed whatsoever. If you want to offer every single one of those areas I just talked about, guess what? You can, you can, why not? Big companies do it all the time. Why can't you do it? There's no reason you can't. Because the beauty is you have a little money of IT, little money in construction, little money in professional services, little money in transportation, maybe a lot of money in medical. You're diversifying. So if ever there's a change in administration or some type of policy change, or maybe you run up against some environmental issue, you're just trying to put up a fence and maybe there's some environmental issue with the land that you're putting the fence on. Who knows? But what's key is by diversifying, it helps diversify your accounts receivable in your bottom line. So all my amazing GovCon winners, thank you all for watching, especially at my new location. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna film so much here for you all. Please subscribe. Please hit the notification button. Please just keep being amazing. Comment below. Y'all already know, especially if you're returning. If you're not, if you're new, everything is possible. Take care, y'all.